I'm Peter, and welcome to another edition of F5 Dev Central's Lightboard Lessons. Applications are at the heart of the digital transformation, and these days, every organization is in the digital experience business. Applications are set to explode 40% by 2023, and the average organization has around 200 applications running their day-to-day -day operations. Applications have become the primary way that customers interact with your business. At the same time, your infrastructure and systems are becoming less centralized, more distributed, and a prime target for attackers due to this increased threat landscape. It's at Azure or GCP one A W S. Now this creates a massive challenge on how to manage your application services across deployments. And you need a simple way to manage all of your application and security services and specifically your big IP infrastructure. Now, of course, big IP runs the gamut of application and security services from load balancing to DNS management to network firewall, web application, firewall, protocol inspection, things like SSL and TLS decryption, inspection, and orchestration, and a whole host of other cool capabilities that keep your applications fast, available, and secure. Now, we also recognize that effective insight, automation, and management of your big IP fleet, especially across these larger multi-deployment environments is often piecemeal and extremely challenging. Enter Big IQ. Big IQ centralized management is an end-to-end -end visibility, analytics, configuration, and management solution for your F5 Big IP application delivery and security services. Big IQ offers a centralized platform to create and configure, provision, deploy, upgrade, and manage your F5 security and application delivery services. So what do you get? You get Big IP visibility, control, automation, and open API endpoints that can be managed from Big IQ. But the coolest thing is that Big IQ allows various teams to work together to keep your applications safe, healthy, and performing. So let's take a look real quick on how that can happen. So first off, let's put net ops out here. Now, NetOps, at least traditionally, have been the primary big IP administrators. They got the keys to the kingdom, um, work on them pretty much day to day. As I mentioned, the experts when it comes to the big IP application delivery and security services. So for our NetOps perspective, they can create and publish application services templates. So let's make a app delivery services catalog. And while we're here, we might as well do security services catalog. So create and publish application services templates. They can assign roles. So RBOC role-based access control. They can assign out access to various individuals working on their specific pieces of the application. They can create and deploy new devices. Device management. So not only create and deploy new devices, but obviously also upgrade and patch big IPs. They can schedule things like reports to go out. They can schedule telemetry to get delivered 
to Beacon. Based on the role-based access control, they can assign the ADC and security dashboards. So each individual has access to their own unique dashboards and certainly manage um, certificates and keys. So they can manage all the things that they traditionally managed with their big IP logging on to each individual device. They can all manage that within big IQ. That's pretty cool. So we also have uh, SecOps. And as the name obviously entails, it's security operations. They are responsible for all the security for the applications going out. Now, the thing with SecOps is obviously they can create and augment web application firewall policies and analyze their policy for compliance. So you're in this, you know, security catalog, they can up, up, they can submit or, you know, upload their security policies so that they can be brought in early in the dev process. They can certainly detect and respond to various threat profiles that are out there. They can manage security holistically. So things like bot detection and DDoS, DDoS attacks, bot detections. Oh, the other thing is, um, you know, access policies. So provisioning access for big IP access policy manager. So employees who are working remote can gain access to corporate, corporate information if they, if they need to. So NetOps works with SecOps. SecOps gets access based on RBOC and they get their own security dashboard. And obviously, you know, managing the firewalls and, and all those web application policies. And then over on this side, and just because I don't really have much room over here, <laughs> let's put these over here, sort of like the service consumers, but it's really more like DevOps, app dev, etc. And these individuals are specifically responsible and kind of only interested in in their own in their own application that's going to go wild, set the, set the world on fire. So they were just concerned about their own applications. They're really not F5 or big IP experts from, but from a DevOps and app dev perspective, they can certainly select application policies as they're building out their application. They can certainly pull security policies. That's that whole thing I was talking about earlier the shifting left with security. So bringing security in and particularly things like security policies early in the dev process. So once the application is ready to go live, it's not one of those, you know, security calls timeout to have to test it all. Um, they've already provided the policy. DevOps has pulled the policy early and have been working with the policy throughout the dev process to ensure once the application is ready to go to production, they can just launch it. And speaking of launching, they can certainly deploy to test and production environments. If there's a problem, they can alert the other teams and they can troubleshoot together to figure out problems. Over here, they may have some authored templates. So things like AS3, though we have some automated work flows workflows hopefully you can read that and so like app dev and devops can use things like ansible playbooks and github repos and you know pulling that code from various locations and automate this whole entire process so imagine instead in, instead of having a you have a big fleet of big ips having to log on to each one of them say to upgrade or patch you can do it automatically from Big IQ and update and patch the entire fleet of Big IPs that are out there easily and automated. So what do you get? 
let's see, you get cost savings from the consolidation of deployments, you get better control of your big IP implementations, you get consistency, which kind of sort of breeds, you know, simplicity and security on how big IP, you know, how the applications are delivered, provisioned, you know, deployed and managed across the various entities that you are deployed to. So like, for instance, um, you know, the various clouds may offer, say, a web application firewall, but they might not offer all of the same bells and whistles, nuances. What's critically important is having that same web application firewall policy exactly the same across deployments, not, you know, sort of differences in one or the other. So that's really, really important. The, obviously, the time savings due to all of the self-service workflows and centralized approach rather than, you know, each individual having to go on each uh, individual big IP. I mentioned easier troubleshooting earlier. Uh, the automated workflows is a big one. So you really kind of manage your entire big IP application delivery and security services from big IQ with the various access control to the dashboards, to the policies, to the workflows. Pretty cool stuff. If you'd like to learn more about Big IQ, you would just go to, where can I fit this in? How about we just put it over here? F5.com forward slash Big IQ. Easy. Thanks for watching. I am Peter. Thanks for liking, sharing, and subscribing. And we'll see you next time on Lightboard Lessons, and we'll always see you in the community. Thanks for watching.